Good evening, everyone. The topic that was, uh, you know, on the, the first one on the list, how life with Christ means life fully alive. I, I thought right away of John 10, 10. It's easy to remember. John 10, 10 is, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, have it uh, in abundance. And I, I think about what is abundant life for a college student? What is abundant life for any of us, really? The idea of abundant is full. Not so much quantitatively in terms of amount, but qualitatively. You know, you could have a lot of pizza, but it's bad pizza, right? Or you could have some really good pizza, and it might not be a lot, but it's so much more satisfying because it's so good. And all my analogies are food, by the way, so, um, <laughs> you know, uh, it's past the dinner hour for most of you, I think. But, um, but the idea is, think about it. When he says, I'm coming that you might have life and have it in abundance, think of the, the, the richness, not the amount. It's good that we're before the Blessed Sacrament because I, I thought a, a little bit about John 6, the Bread of Life Discourse, especially verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. And this bread which I give is my flesh for the life of the world, for the life of the world, again, the, the language of fullness, uh, of being fully alive. I've often said this, but you know, you know, Nebraskans, we kind of like our beef, right? There's nothing like a good steak, but you know what? This can do something a good steak can't take care of. And while I love a good steak as much as anybody, and and uh, usually don't turn one down. Again, food. I see them back to food. <laughs> Well, the verse is food, you know. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Take that literally and take it to heart. There is an abundance of living forever that we all long for. And that's what he nourishes in this Eucharist. We're hardwired for communion, union with one another and with him. And that's what we receive when we literally receive him in the Eucharist. That's what we uh, welcome into our hearts when we park here long enough to hear him speak to us prayerfully whenever we take time for adoration. So as we enter into some time of adoration, ask him tonight for the abundance that you desire. Ask him for the, the faith to trust that he can make you happier than you can make yourself, for the, the courage to get out of the way and find out. But just pour out your heart to him here in, in this time of adoration before we celebrate Mass and, and, uh, and, and say, I want to be fully alive. I want to live my faith in such a way that you make me fully alive in ways I never imagined and trust that he will. Thank you. Given them bread from heaven. Have in all sweetness within it. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Amen. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Spirit. Rejoicing in the goodness of the Lord who gathers us here, let us acknowledge our sins to prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I want you to think about the, the question Jesus asks uh, of the disciples, you know, who do others say that I am? And then he says quite directly, who do you say that I am? It's a challenging question. It's a difficult one to answer, I think. So when he says the Son of Man to the disciples must suffer greatly, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and rise after three days. When he said this, Peter just is like, you know, rebukes him. He's not understanding who Jesus is. He's not speaking out of that relationship of understanding. Um, he's speaking out of fear. But he also doesn't understand something I think quite profoundly and that what Jesus is talking about is that he's going to undergo his passion precisely because of love. But I want you to think about the fact that love suffers for the other. And this is what Jesus was so willing to do. Peter didn't understand it. And so when Jesus describes it, Peter's like, get behind me. Because Peter hadn't grown in his own love for Jesus enough to know what, what he really intended. We might ask the Lord to help us grow in our ability to love like Him, to grow in our ability to have a love that suffers, that is, in the sense, that is a love that's willing to suffer for the good of the other, um, and not to count the cost, because then we have a sense that we're very much like our God. And the Lord help all of us through this Eucharist to become more and more like Him, that we might be willing to suffer out of love for Him, out of love for our faith, and for out of love for our brothers and sisters. It's good to be with all of you this evening. It's a great chance to just think spiritually with you among all the other things you have to do in a given day. I'm so glad that you have come and proud that you uh, make your spiritual life a priority. It's a great inspiration to me. Thanks to Father Hoke and for the servers and, and uh, 
Alfred, everybody who's made uh, this just really easy for me. Um, look forward to seeing you again. Pray for me and ask the Lord to just keep me going as well. So, my friends, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.